Hi, I'm Tom Summers with the Diner Realty, and today's video is 10 Steps to Buying a House. Whether you've purchased a home in the past or you're a first time home buyer looking to buy your very first house, this video will give you a rough overview of the steps you need to take to get into your new home. Step number one would be choose a realtor. This is probably one of the most important steps in the process because it sets the whole thing up. You want to pick a professional, someone that's a full-time professional real estate agent. Don't pick a part-timer that works another full-time job and only does real estate in the weekends. It won't do you any good. You need an agent who's working throughout the week that answers their phone, can follow up with emails because time is of the essence with a lot of these contracts. You want to make sure that that agent is working for you at all times. Ask them questions. Interview several. Pick one that you feel comfortable with. Ask them, you know, what type of experience do you have? Do you work in this area? Do you know about short sales and foreclosures? Have you worked on those before if you're going to go down that that road? Um, Anything that comes to mind that's going to help you feel comfortable. Step number two would be to refine your search. After you've chosen your realtor, you sit down with that agent, you actually have a meeting before you start looking at houses, and you talk about what you want. Where do you want to live? How many bedrooms? How many baths? Do you want a large yard? Is a three-car garage important to you? Whatever amenities that you're looking for, tell that agent because it's going to make me a better agent for you to be able to refine that search and actually choose houses to send you and show you that fit the criteria that you're looking for. Step number three would be to get pre-approved. This is the other key piece of the puzzle before you start physically looking at the homes. You want to know what you can afford and you want to know what your comfort level is. So you want to sit down with a loan officer, apply for a mortgage, give them all of the information they need to process that and get a pre-approval. Not only will that pre-approval help you when you're negotiating your contract to purchase the house, it also gives you peace of mind that you're spending what you want to spend and you're staying within your means and feeling comfortable. Step number four then would be to go out and look at properties. After you've had the searches set up for you and you've looked through the different homes, go out and physically see them. I always advise looking at five to six at a time so that you compare several different ones at a time to find out if one stands out more than the other. After you've chosen a house and you know that this is the one and you've done all the homework and the agent has provided you all the information you need to make a decision, then you sit down with that agent and you write an offer. At that time you go through all the comps to see what's sold recently and look at all the other neighborhood statistics and all the other information for the city to help you determine what offer you would like to make on that property and the other terms that you want to spell out in the contract. Step number six is then I, the agent, would present this offer to the listing agent as well as the seller and then we negotiate back and forth. Everything in a contract is negotiable. So once you have started negotiating the process, it could go back, it could take two weeks, it could take two hours. It all depends. Everybody's a little bit different, but you go back and forth, you hammered out the details, and now you have an accepted purchase agreement. Step number seven would be to get an inspection. So after you have your purchase agreement, you want to hire an inspector, go through and have a whole home inspection. This is really important as well because they're looking out for your best interest and you want to make sure that there isn't something that maybe the seller missed that could be an issue down the road so you don't end up having a huge amount of money going out when you first move in because all of a sudden you've got a bad roof or you have whatever the case might be. Uh, In the state of Minnesota you don't have to be licensed to be an inspector so it's really important that the inspector you choose has a background in, in building or engineering something along that line so they can best serve you. The next step after that, after all the paperwork is done and the inspection is fine and you've hammered all that out, would be to do a walkthrough or a final walkthrough. This typically occurs two days or so before the closing and you, the buyer, get to walk through your new home to make sure that not only has all of the things been repaired that the seller said they would if there is a list, but just to make sure that they're actually packing up and moving out and the house still looks uh, in the same condition as to when you purchased it in the first place. Step number nine would be to go to the closing. On this day, you have a title company and a closer working for you, and the seller has someone representing them. We sit down at the table, you uh, sign all the papers for your mortgage and all of the other pertinent documents, and after that point, you now own the home. So then the last step would be step 10, which is moving in. That typically happens right after closing. Uh, Within an hour or so, you have the keys and you can move in. The only time it doesn't happen right after closing is if you're purchasing a foreclosure where the HUD, which is the final statement, has to go back to the bank. The bank has to sign off on it. Then you get your keys. Pretty easy stuff. Um, It's a nice process. It works well. Um, Choose your agent. That's all I can say, and it will bring you much more success. 
Thanks for taking the time for watching the video, and I hope you have a wonderful day.